Comments made during the broadcast of No Bones About It do not necessarily reflect the views of the staff, management, or underwriters of KAOS Radio or the Evergreen State College. Opinions expressed are those of the host and the guests on the program. Hey, and uh, I had uh, this little button come up above me, this little red light. It said door entry. And uh, I said, well, who would be coming now? Gary doesn't come until about 530. And uh, I go to the door and it's, Gentleman says to me, let me in, let me in. I'm like, oh, my God, it's Jokerson. I thought he was going to call it. He, 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 he's in the studio. This is exciting. How are you doing tonight, Jokerson? Hey, hey, I'm good. Thanks thanks for uh, being here. Yeah, thanks for keeping me on my toes. I was like, I got to put up a mic. I got to get this set up. Right. So it, this is this is good. And uh, um, I was just telling him we were just talking a little bit with uh, Paula Horn just earlier uh, about World Peace and Prayer Day and how important uh there's uh, work is uh, all of our work, you know, but what you were saying really, well, what you say a lot uh, that we have to, it's not about paying attention, it's about, I don't know, it, uh, I, words escape me sometimes with, with how I feel and how the earth, uh, I know the earth will will be here long after we we are here, you know, we're, you know, we have to be we have to be grounded i i feel anyways and, and mother so i just was wondering your thoughts i know that you've been traveling around and you just got you were in sweden not too long ago so well yeah um chante was staying up at you's up yellow hello how are you and uh like to say that you know it's good to be back here in chaos chaotic land again <laughs> um yeah i think i think if you think about it i think we're way past uh you know, everybody everybody talks about, you know, how they're going to survive it, whatever it is. And uh, and uh, everybody, you know, prays and, and things. And, and I think that's good, really is. But there's the people that I know that I'm, I'm with the left and right in New York City is that they they think that they're ex- excluded from the chaos that's going to go on no pun intended the chaos of mother earth and so they have individualized their little spot in heaven so to speak because they do their prayers and i think that's still the uh the, the isolated thinking that at risk of uh uh people try to save mother earth with and i i think it's uh that that whole idea of treating Mother Earth, to me, as if she is the sick one, is missing the point here. Because I think, I think we we treat Mother Earth as if she is a patient. You know, we're, we we are not doctors. Um, we can change things. I know that with energy, because a lot of those prayers are dogmatic in a way, because we've been colonized with that view of hierarchy and dogma and patriarchy you know and i talk about that a lot is you know i I suffer a lot of native people from back home suffer from ptsd we know this as post post post-traumatic stress disorder but i call it patriarchal stress traumatic stress disorder because that's what the current regime is on on domination of mother earth and, and the minds that 
that uh, kowtow to that type of reasoning and logic of, of uh, ownership and domination and uh, making prayer into a religion because it's defined through the colonial eyes. And so the mindset has been going on. And, and we know the history, all of that history for a long time, even when I was a little boy, when the elders were talking about this in the, in, you know, in the little drum circles and that was illegal at that time and in, within the lodges, the Inipis, they were talking about this stuff. It's very common knowledge that we we talk this way on the reservation all the time. It's 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 across the table, it's it's in living rooms. But when a when a uh, when a patriarchal thinker comes in to that circle, they're all su- surprised and they're all spiritual and they're all you know throwing smoke in the air and they're saying all these all these supernatural words and things that, you know, and, it's, and you can tell how much it misses, they miss in their lives because they don't do it every day. Uh, I'm pretty sure, um, you know, Orville and uh, Paula know that this is what you do every day anyway. You give thanks always. You appreciate, you nurture, you nourish that part of Mother Earth that you are. They know that. That's what, that's what happens. Um, and I think that's what, you know, changes things and, uh, regardless of how our lives have been messed up and as native people who've grown up on a reservation, you know, all of our lives are messed up has to do with either, you know, missing fathers or missing mothers or missing siblings or missing, you know, parental skills, miss, missing all those things, those social ills that the the community at large in, in so-called America has and think that everybody should be like we should be. Uh, that's a role model, and yet, as Native people, we are promoting that very same role model about how to have finances, how to to think about saving, you know, a single thing like let's sing, let's, let's save the whale. And and uh, Sister Deborah Whiteplume said that you know he she said uh, you know they're they're giving you a choice what to save now. You chase save the whale, you can save the wolf, you can save this and that, because they divided everybody up. And uh, we're not thinking as a whole anymore. And I think that that's part of the key. And uh, I think uh, the indigenous people's way of, of getting along and communicating with that particular, uh, excuse me, that co- particular um, location or locale in their history or their knowledge of that history of place is why uh, and, and is what is really wrong with Mother Earth not responding, but she will respond. I'm saying responding because a lot of those places around the United States, Native people have been re- relocated to. And uh, and so they're saying these prayers in a long-distance call, like for the Black Hills. That's what I do, you know. I know a lot of people do that around here. Um, so we say these long-distance prayers, and they travel like energy, you know. But when we're wrapped up into the colonial model, and we excuse ourselves and rationalize ourselves about, you know, well, we'll take alcohol and, yeah, like all those Indians, they, they, they're all drunkards anyway. They, they, you know, they're, they're complaining about everything. Those Indians, you know, they're, they're alcoholics, but we're not looking at the bigger picture. A society that doesn't have a culture, which is deadened, which deadens the spirit. Look what happened to Native people when they drink alcohol. Look what happens. They lose culture. So what's that saying about the people at large who have drank alcohol for generations upon generations, and they say they have a culture? Maybe it's the idea that they don't have a culture. That's why they have to point at those who still retain uh, somewhat of a culture, at least the remnants of it, and, and that's why the smallest minority is going to be always looked at as, you know, these these backwards people yet the strongest, as as we know it, in, in, I wouldn't say spiritual way, but recognize the energy that is in place with Mother Earth. You, you, see, you follow me? Absolutely. absolutely. And uh, Paula did touch base on that uh, the prayer is every day. It's not just this one time a year oh, yeah. that, that, that we pray every day. And then and, uh, and Orville, you know, of course, they're always in prayer. But this, this day, they're asking for, for us to, what you just said, direct our energy Mm -hmm. uh, at these sacred spots and uh, I do know that uh, I just had this conversation the other day with folks about alcohol and how 
it fragments everything. Yeah. You know, and how like when you you take too much of it, you're you're fragmenting yourself and like so the culture that you do come from, it's fragmented. It's not mm-hmm. oh of because it's been uh I don't know the word I'm looking for, but you know how like something the lineage breaks. That's what I'm trying to say with the alcohol. And so it's not that, that direct connection yeah. to what you're talking about with folks that still have that direct connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know, I know I'm, a, I, I'm, I don't drink or anything, but I know that I live in this society called America and I mm-hmm. know that I'm, I'm sick mm-hmm. because of, of the fragmentation, uh, and the things that had to be done in order from, from my lineage for myself to be sitting here with talking to you right now. Yeah. You know, so I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and, and it's it's easy because, you know, I'm I'm also a colonized Native person, and I can find guilt in other people first rather than myself. And so I take that view every day to notice, you know, okay, what do I do as a Native person when I first get up? Of course, I do those things. I I take the water. It's my first, my first foremost move when I get up. First of all, I get up and I say, Thank you, body, for waiting for me to wake up. I wake, I woke up in my body. So that's the first thing, right? Mm-hmm. And that that you your body was waiting there all night for you, and you woke up, and it's still there. And then the next thing is, of course, whatever I have to do to 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 wake up a little bit more. But the the primary thing I do is is a cup of water, and I use little as possible, but enough so that I'm addressing that in a ceremony, that in, in energy, the changing that connection all over all over the world, the the, the Ina, the the Mini Wichosani to your health of the people, you know, of, of all life. And so that's what I do personally, you know, and of course I'm dressing addressing all the directions, not just the four directions. Mm-hmm. So I do it that way, you know, and I'm 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 pretty much set on my on my way. I'm not really, you know, taking out a pipe and turning it all kinds of directions and saying all these things and whatever because I do it every day, right? And and so and I think about the loss that we have in the family structure within our identity as native people. And if we if we we are caught up in trying to figure out who we are as as native people, we're going to be at loss because who has been def- defining us all along is is the major majority at large. They've been defining us as the what's the Indians? What's the where's your card? And and uh, it really doesn't matter to me. It just the, the I wouldn't say human being because it it's not about being a human being at all for me. It's it's how your behavior, how you exchange that behavior, and that means a connection to the cosmos without being new agey. The cosmos of being that vichasha, like our brother talks about, you know, that we are the star beings and the gift of the stars. So that's that's what we think in. But that doesn't remove us from the process uh, of being here grounded with Mother Earth. We We often... Because of our thinking process, hierarchy and dogma, we all always go into to a higher consciousness. We always go into a heaven type of consciousness, and we lose the dream time, the real dream time. And I'm talking about alcohol. When you are dreaming or talking about alcohol, you 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 imagine yourself a circle. Half of that time you're awake, and half of the time you are asleep. A natural process. And. Uh, when when you're awake, you know, and you're affected by alcohol or drugs or even behavior, the colonial behavior, it, it's proven that when you drink alcohol, that when you pass out from any mind altering drug, that your 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 brain wave goes into alpha mode. It's like watching T V. It's a straight line across. So here in America people live their lives only half because they're always searching for their real dreams, because they're numbing all of that dream time out of their lives. They don't feel complete. So they're always looking for themselves. Who are we? Who are we? And they, they, they don't even know that there's one thing that's at, 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 at the base of all this. It's a celebration in their life that they call alcohol. They have it at all their holidays, all their parties, every day. So they're numbing everything out all the time. And I always think about spirits. I I know this. I I wonder always why they called it spirits. You know, um, 
and, and, and because I'm an experienced person, I'm 27, 28 years now with, without any kind of drugs or alcohol. So I, I'm doing okay, right? But that's, uh, that's like half of, my, half of my life is I know the behavior has to do a lot with cons- consumption of it and the consumption of, of consumerism. So we consume everything without ever being res- reciprocal to the whole process of, of Mother Earth. We, we make our nice landscaping designs and we study little things here and there, and, but that's all we know. We don't know how to truly address you know the the energy of that plant or that tree or the, the, the four legs or the we don't know how to do that anymore. There's no culture. There's no there's no culture with Mother Earth anymore, except for those few remnants of native folks who live in the world, and, uh, and that's what I'm saying. So if we we are going to be Native Americans. That's become we have become the what's of who they who they want to identify us as, but be even native, even indigenous. And I've been thinking about changing the word indigenous. All it means is poor people, you know, and, and uh, poor people aren't for this society. Look how they treat poor people in this society. So that's why these words, I've always been working on these words all the time, because when you're, you're young, you understand a lot more than, than people give us credit for when you're young as children, because you catch them up, especially if you catch up to the, to the understanding of the word, especially when you are from another language in another culture and I, I guess I wouldn't say I'm unlucky or lucky but I've been privileged to live in in this society in a way because that privilege I take home and when I take it home I'm doing it from Mother Earth when I when I when I can go home and re- not resource but source where the keys for for myself as a Lakota you know, come from my family, regardless of how fragmented it is, because I have brothers who have been fragmented out of being Lakota, you know, so they're thinking Washichu all the time. And that's not just white man, as we know, that's a mindset, that's anybody. So, okay. so we, we do know that. So in a way, you know, if people are following me, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, to truly know what is going on here? Try to understand the language where, where there's 437, I think it is, for 437 references to self in English. 437. In this in this language, Lakota, I think there's only one, right? And so this is a big difference between how people think. We're always looking for self, so we got all these ways that look for self and yet we're, we don't even understand because we're always le- levitating ourselves away from reality and so the alcohol does that and uh, that's why I think that you know does America and Americans truly have a culture because they've been numbing it all these generations for a long long time and when you're talking I'm just thinking about uh, this conversation I had just yesterday uh, or actually Friday with the uncle and uh you know you're talking about the plants and things and uh you know we were talking about tobacco Hmm. how it would take you know 100 lifetimes to really understand that plant and what 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 energy it really has you know and like and that's worth working with it every day and we were talking uh, about what you you know the fragmentation Uh, like there's very few that live that way that are still on the earth right now Mm -hmm. not in the the ancestor land and uh so those that have that connection and so like my i can just talk about myself you know how fragmented it is and how i'm trying to piece it together Hmm. you know and he we're just talking about how like one medicine is you know what you should be really focusing on and, and to bring that in into the bigger picture uh of you know for lack of a better word because i don't i i prayer is important but it's it's our life is a prayer it's a ceremony we have to bring that back in and and through through that understanding and to for uh, for us uh, the the set and to to be with these folks that really breathe that way you know that live that way and uh they're all around us uh here and to bring us back into 
I think you said it a while back, you know, like, uh, you know, Lakota, you know, there's no, there's no exclusion, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, and it, that's everyone and everything. And it's every, you know, from, you know, this little particle here, it's the, doesn't exclude, you know, so the, the self part, you know, it's everyone. Yeah, it, it totally is. And, and it is, it has to be that way. There's no other way to look at it. And, and you, you, you see that natural logic that mother earth has for us we follow that line everything begins to make sense common sense very intelligent common sense and also if you think about this other way that's been forced upon us it 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 waits to birth oneself after it dies you know what i mean they're going to heaven so that's when they're going to birth everything They, they don't do it here they talk about it but there's no change and, and systems tend to do that. They take you away from learning how to rebirth every every time in this society. And, and, and we, we use words to put it in our head to think that we're doing the right thing when morally we're not ever doing the right thing. Um, so, you know, the heaven, the religious, the dogma, the government, the society, you talk about everything, technology, everything is is leading up to an end. And... Then after that, we'll we'll rebirth ourselves, right? Well, when we get to heaven or wherever, we'll, we'll, we'll be a new world and all that stuff. That's that's what they did to us. They rebirthed themselves when they got into the new world. And I think that's what the process has been going on over there and here. But if you know, understand how one rebirths themselves here, that's going to take another process. That's going to take a commitment of turning turning all the thoughts that we think or worth it in this system. Turn it around, and you see that this system and the way of thinking that has programmed this to thinking all, all of this is so good because we're, we're evolutionary. That's part of who we are as human as the humans. But we're, if, it, if it is, then I don't want any part of this. Right, right. And, I, and I've read many things and sat with many folks and how we have to bring that... Uh, heaven here it's right here now it's on the planet now it's right before us it's not going away Mm. you know i remember you once said also you know uh, the sacred feminine it's here it's the earth we just have to get down and touch her it hasn't you know it's not something you have to chase after she's right here and it's important for us to to remember that and to really get down and touch her Uh, because what you said is we've all been uh uh, John John recently said that our brain is John Trudeau is uh, he talked about how uh, our brain is like a petri dish and how we just go in and take little things that yeah. that we think are okay yeah. and pull it back in instead of thinking yeah. truly thinking about it and I was like whoa yeah that's yeah. true you know we all do that and I remember after I talked to Steve Newcomb uh, a while back, I was, I'm really paying attention to my words. It, I was before, but it's really hard. It's yeah. you know, uh, yeah. you know, I don't like to w- use the word Indian. I don't like to use the, you know, like he when we talked about. I know the treaties are important, and I, but who defined the treaties? Yep. The native people didn't define them. Yeah, all the words were there on the colonial side. So I started to think about this stuff, and like you know, what you're just what you're talking about what brings to me is that uh, the highest law of the land is the, you know, creation itself, and so we have to come back into that and know that it's right here now. Yeah, right. It it is, and without going too far in the past and the future, I, I think that we uh, the treaties, and if I really think about them, they they know that because we lack. Now, as Native people, we're always going to want. So we're going to be in that wanting, that begging, that type of stage of mentality of trying to get back what was ours, so so to speak, ours. And so these treaties are, are defining how we beg with all respect with people who have been doing these work, this work for, for a long time. There's, a, there's another way that I can add to what they're doing is is these treaties are, are been written in... Roman language. And these treaties, 60% of the words are in Roman language. And they're embedded in war. They're embedded in domination. 
They're embedded in, in taming everybody else. They're embedded in ownership. They're embedded in patriarchy. They're embedded in death. That Those are the words of you find in the treaties. Now, the reason why they abrogated them and said uh, no more back in 1870s, they said no more, this is it, you know, because they knew they had us numerically and, and that we were about, you know, we were about conquered in a sense to them. And uh, so what they didn't figure is that there is a, a, another language, languages of the native people that go far beyond the reaches of any Roman or Latin language. The English language, 60% Latin, 60% Roman, the conquering language. So these treaties are never going to be reinstituted, reinstated, because they, they cannot... They cannot abstract our thoughts in, in indigenous peoples. And this is where the colonial mindset comes in. If we continue to think colonial, that we are going to get these treaties back. You know, we're not getting ready for the, the true, the next treaty that we should be making with Mother Earth, which is a bigger, more responsible thing to do. Because those treaties are stuck in a Smithsonian down layers, you pull out drawers, and you can see the drawers, and they're stuck in there, and some of them are signed in pencil, and some are not. But you think about the energy that they're keeping by everybody isolating their thoughts to get that treaty reinstated. It's our word against what they, they've written. So what they've written, they cannot comprehend because of our word, if you understand that. Our word is, is like it says, mitako yoyasi. That treaty is about a piece meal of a piece of land, of something that they broke. So they're gonna always going to stay, stay to that we broke. I mean, yeah, the, the, the treaties are no longer valid because they lied, and they continue to lie. They have to give something to the, the benefactors called consumers called Americans in order to, to see that. See, this is the good way, and yet because we're so small— and even in our behavior and thinking processes of, of indigenous peoples, that that behavior, the large, the larger behavior, is not going to pay attention to this pure indigenous behavior. Excuse me, the word indigenous, in, in that sense of the word, um, the poor people, right? But if you think about the poor people and how Salvation Point mentality has gotten them through alcohol, by alcohol, education, um, religion, has taken, it's taken its toll, right? But there's a few people who have remained strong around the world as, as Native people, as original peoples. And that's those seeds that cannot be ignored. Those seeds have everything to do with sacred sites all around the world. And this is why, see, they know because they lost it way back then. And they know that if Native people get close to those sacred sites, things change. And this is why they do everything to stop us from being so formal, so pulled together that we can actually dream. Dream or dreams doesn't mean necessarily mean dream of future. Dream or dreams into reality right now. That's what sacred sites do. I, I, I'm going to add that because that's the way I think, you know, and I think part, part of non-answering or non-questioning is is person should try it. Person, a person should go to that place out there in, in Mother Earth, nature, and they can feel it. Once, once they do it, everything makes sense. It's not even a language. No, it's... Uh like you were uh, said, uh, the whole earth is holy, but those places, if you visited any of them and just sat still, it's it awakens something, you know, deep. And you used the word seed, and, and that's what I'd like to, to, to say, to add to, is uh, I remember Alex talked about the nasu, the seed. Oh, that, yeah. And, you know, that's how important our seed is. That we and when we gather to those places, what you were talking about, how that's why the the energy that's created there frightens mm -hmm. the system, mm -hmm. because it it becomes a collective uh, 
thought. I want to use the word thought. Because yeah. that to me is what prayer is. It's thought. You know, directed thought. And so when we're at those places, it's amazing um, that happened. And I I've had a friend that just was uh, down at Pear Butte. And uh, he said uh, there was a ceremony there. And uh, he couldn't say much. And I respect that. But he said it was the greatest day for faith that he ever experienced. You know, when you put the, you know, the the Chinooba Wakan together. But he was he talked about that as his body. Mm-hmm. How it, it was put back together in that mm-hmm. prayer, and mm-hmm. uh, it was being at those those power spots for yeah. you know the, yeah. the native people have known when, long before the the colonial mindset hit anywhere in Turtle Island or the world for that matter. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's about 5.30 with Chaos Radio. We're here with Teokas and Ghost Horse in the studio. And uh, so, you know, bringing that, we were talking about, like, I'm thinking about how a lot of people sometimes, back to the treaties, you know, I I take the bus and I talk to folks on the bus. and But uh, how, I know the language of it, but it's one of the, uh, I don't want to even use this, uh, it's what uh, fuels a lot of a lot of native folks, uh, you know, to be able to protect what is still um, available, you know, like, and they still want that, and so there, there, there's a direct attempt also to uh, get rid of all of those treaties, yeah. you know. They're just up in Bellingham. They had a group up there, an anti-Indian group, that said these are all dated you all need to be assimilated Mm -hmm. you know come into our thinking here in america you know it's over you know and so people are i'm in i'm upset about that you know you know can we talk a little bit about that that, yeah that thinking yeah just just uh imagine that so we all do so we all go over we stop being who we are we get assimilated and and uh, then the native, the spirit of this land truly dies, you know. Um, and I think about the Black Hills a lot and because that is the heart of Turtle Island, right? And so when I think about the heart of Turtle Island, I think about the holes that are being dug, things that are being exploded and polluted and everything. That's like our heart, the heart of a turtle. It's, it's, it's uh, in a spot where it hurts, you know. So when these people who are um, saying, I'll get rid of the treaties, become an American, you know, it's all about, you know, freedom and all all the ideas that they put out there and jingoism, um, they have to be that way because they have no other way to think. They have no roots because you think about who they are, they they can't even figure that out because they're always looking for themselves. Uh, I don't think many Native people that I know of are looking for themselves. They they know who they are. But it's Americans that don't know who they are. They they can refer, oh, I'm part Irish and I'm part this and I'm part that. And, yeah, I do the jig and I, I drink green beer on, uh, you know, March 17th and things like that that are Americanized. And so when it comes to treaties, that was word. And the other one is written, written word. And their their Bible is a treaty. It's a compact with their God that they've broken over and over and over, and they still refer to that same God over and over. Well, that's the same mindset and speech, the speech uh, slurs that they're saying against Native people by, by uh, you know, confronting Native people in a sense, uh, your time is over, get over it, come be an American. It's all good type of thing. I remember before I left Olympia back in 1998, there was Senator Slate Gordon who was speaking at, uh, in Tukwila, um, and uh, basically, was gonna. There were there were uh, like 500 non-natives outside, and it was bleachers made for them. Uh, Senator Slade Gordon made sure that uh, the bleachers were there for them. So you had all these these sort of people who were protecting the, the elk because at that time they were blaming the natives for the lack of elk because the natives were were getting their tags to go out, and they were blaming natives. And I was thinking about the whole thing, and that then they wanted to get rid of native people. There were so many. There's so it, it's um, it's reemerging here again with in the, the fish. northwest. Yeah, yeah. Fish. with the fish, everything. It's going to be about everything. It's going to be about water. You know, it's gonna, it's all of that stuff. 
So they're going to scramble. There's going to be helter skelter, you know. But as a native person, you can be in the world, but not of it. And that's the key to understand that they have to finish it out. Even when, when they throw slurs at native people. And if we get caught in the fray and, and want to fight back and, you know, they're part of that whole system. That that system is, is this huge monster. So to be in the world but not of it, I think, is the key to not get mixed up in all the the political assassinations of spirit that come along um, of our minds and things. And I, if we can remember that, you know, our hearts give out 150,000, if, if I think it's, 125,000 electromagnetic waves as opposed to the brain that gives away, I think it's 25,000 electromagnetic waves. So which one are we listening to? Which system is coming from where? And I'm pretty sure that Mother Earth and, and her, we, we, she, see the thing is we are, Mother Earth is not immune to us, right? She can be if she chooses to be. But we do know that we're not immune to Mother Earth as Native people. They're going to they're gonna continue to try to do that by the way that they promote modern civilization, is to try to get away from Mother Earth. It's in the language to get away from Mother Earth, the source, the root. And this is why they have to do it to indigenous peoples, because they don't know who they are. So they see a Native person, and I experience it every day, because I obviously look like a Native person. I experience between all colors not just not just one color of americans i experience it in new york city i experience it everywhere i go i have long hair i'm six foot two you know 230 pounds this is a dangerous person as a native man you know and uh, that first physical thing to them is then imposing you're, yeah. then you're clear and coherent they yeah. don't like that at all yeah yeah and, and then they, they like oh this guy is, is whatever but see, it's not a, it's not about that whole curtain, you know. The the it's about pulling the curtain back and seeing what that is. It's 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 a it's a skull and bones mentality to be elite to all other people because they're God that they made a treaty with with that that book that they brought over. It started over there. It brought it over here in 1493, and they continue to to live that lie. So these people who are telling you to assimilate, they're lying to themselves. They're lying to us. They're lying to Mother Earth. And you do not lie to Mother Earth. Right. And I, I like what you said that it has to play itself out. And uh, another elder friend of mine, he said that uh, uh, what you talked about, that energy that, uh, you know, I'll just use the word bad, that bad energy. Bad. You know, that... Uh, I'm not attaching myself to those kind of bad things anymore. He said, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm following only the good, the good, you know, the people that, you know, that, uh, that are helping, that are truly helping. And I think you said that once too. And, and I know myself that that's the, that's where I want to be at, you know, um, and I don't want to exclude, <laughs> you know, cause yeah. it's about, it's what you said. It's the, the earth, you know, and, and she keeps giving and giving and giving and uh but we also know that uh when she is uh upset and um, you know these things happen you know sandy and uh uh the gulf and uh the fukushima uh, all these these things the, uh, the tornado uh, just happened in oklahoma yeah uh the earth like she she's really in charge mhm mm yeah, and I and I feel like uh, for me there, and it can happen anywhere. We have things everywhere, and it, that's okay. Are you pay attention? You know, because I'm still in charge. Whether whether you feel that you know uh, you're going to this promised land or whatever this stuff, right now, you know, like here, it, I think that uh, to me they're to me they're wake up calls. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hoping that folks are paying attention, and because uh, that also that friend of mine also told me that the Earth will also um, show us what we sh should be doing in the first place, taking care of each other. Yeah, how many times can we wake up? 
you know it, we got that's the language what kind of what, what is going to take for us to wake up is it going to be after we're and then we're begging or how can you beg mother earth not to do what she's doing to correct the whole balance you know how can you beg how can you throw money at you know and i think i think i read something from you that oh no a friend of mine uh actually a cousin said uh that because of Sir hurricane sandy new york state is going to throw 19 billion dollars to uh hurricane preparedness they're going to fight in other words they're going to fight mother earth's natural ability to <laughs> to do what she's doing and hope that they're going to survive 19 billion dollars where well 19 billion dollars well that could take care of a lot of things besides you know b- rebuilding the same places so you could have the same view because it's your property you know and you're demanding the state rebuild your your sand lot down there because it, it it's an investment in the state and you're convinced so you continue to recycle no matter what it is you recycle the destruction and it's the destruction is 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 defined as progress as evolution but it's really revolution the very same thing over and over it's, it's repetitive it's redundant and and they continue to recycle destruction because we hear it every day i i you know i i if i turn a tv on i know what to expect i turn a radio on i know what to expect you know why do i have to search for it so it because the majority of the tv the majority of the radio are doing the same thing. You know, that's the big difference. And, and you know, there's, there's some, some places in Mother Earth that you can never see. I mean, you can never say that it's doing the same thing. Mother Earth is doing different things all the time in different places all at once. And we can't even fathom that. We don't have words for that. We have to explain it in long, drawn-out sentences to try to get a feeling of it. Because we emote everything. We emote everything. And because it's this way, patriarchy is abusing Mother Earth. And it would be the other same way around. Matriarchy is abu- could abuse Mother Earth because they're both from the left and the right. They're both the same thing. Now, what we're looking for is that balance. And that balance is Mitako Oyasi. See? It gets rid of the matriarchy and the patriarchal thinking. You know, it goes back to the original thought. And the original thought did not have to think. Right. And in the, and in the, uh, the circle, there is no hierarchy. You know, everybody, everything, mm. all, everything. I mean, it, no exclusion is all the same. Mm-hmm. And it's like you, you don't have to think about it. It's like what you just said. You don't. Have, it's because there's nobody there trying to outdo anybody. Mm-mm. You know, it's just pure thought. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm looking at all the references. You know, like I'm doing here. I'm looking at some references because I'm I'm trying to connect with listeners that are probably um, probably objecting to what i'm saying you know and that's fine i think that's that's the process of it and i think the other part is there are listeners who are really listening with their heart who really hear this how how really i am angry i am sad i all at the same time but it's not an emotional thing for me because you can employ employ see there's another one I can put this work, there's another one, see, I can put this into motion. I have to put it in, in myself first, but it doesn't come down to individual. That's why we have mitako yasi. If, if you put it in motion, somebody else has already put it in motion. So you're just, you're just feeling the same motion from someplace else. And they put it in motion, and all of a sudden everybody's in motion. The, the takushkanshka, everybody, the spirit is moving everything that moves the spirit. And all that comes down to is Mother Earth is doing it. It's not dogma, you know. It's 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 the uh, it's the uh, the coordination and the cooperation of of the stars and, and Mother Earth and the grandmother Moon and and the Father Sky. Some people say, but it's uh, you know the 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 Sun, the Father, and all these. And this is not a dogmatic, layered thing. It's not hierarchy hierarchy. This is. We we talk in hierarchy, 
in this language because we don't know humbleness. We only know humility, and that's a dominate, dom, domination thought. So we have to think about how all these are equal to. One cannot deal without another. They're all relation to something else. And, and we can't even think that. But if you think and you feel the very complex life system that's out there that's called Mother Earth, then you see that every little thing that these natives knew long before science or philosophy or any kind of books came over here from the East or from the West, that these natives here knew it. But it's in the language to find something wrong with the native peoples. And it's always been about finding something wrong with the native peoples because because when you find there's something wrong with the native peoples, it's usually because it's a result of this society doing something wrong to the native peoples. Yeah, it's, it goes back to what you talked about, the alcoholism, the boarding schools, all those, those uh, social ills that... Uh, it took away from the the family, the Teoshpe, uh, uh, the you know the aunties, the uncles, all that. It goes back to what we we're talking about that uh, that break in the lineage and how uh, I know I've been affected by it, mm-hmm. by uh, colonialization. And I think anybody that's walking on the earth has been in, in one way, shape, or another. And you know those those people that are still connected and it goes back to me, anyways. Those people that are still connected to that original thought. Mm. Um, I'm very thankful for they're hol- they're really holding it together. And what what you talked about the motion, see that that's how I also see it too. It's like they're holding that that prayer, the motion, and it's up for us to come into that motion. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it goes back to uh, what a relative told me: if you go back to your ancestral roots, mm-hmm. we can all talk. Yeah, because it's it's not. You can think, oh, you mean action or reaction, but that that uh, that's that comes back to an oh, I'm going to react to, I'm going to act, I'm going to have, I have to have some action about it. But if you only recognize that things are already in motion, it takes away all the 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 blame okay. that native people have saddled themselves into that rut of blaming this and that and whatever. Even I do it once in a while, but. It's where I, I'm getting to a place where I understand that the blame is part of the whole colonial process, right? And and so that's because that's what they did to their religion over there. But here, you know, there's no one to blame. Mother Earth is not blaming us, you know. I'm not holding up Mother Earth as if she's God in a way. I'm holding her as a source of life, a primary source of life. That That's only spirit sensible you know and and common sense to me that that is is what it is without having to deaden everything by a language that says oh it's a planet and if we do the science to it and we apply math which are all man-made things religion is a man-made thing math is a science is a man-made thing already now why are we trying to figure out the answers through those man-made things human things i don't think mother earth is calculating us or you know doing all these things that we are doing to her so there's there's a disconnect right there to think that we have to do this that we can manage mother earth it's all about managing ourselves and we haven't done that yet but see it's like again brian it's and it's in a language we're all trying to rise above because it's the language that's telling us that we can do better than what we have and we can't even do what we're doing now with what we have. That's the key. Right. Instead of doing better than what you know, that what we have. Like, no no, that's that's consumerism. Right. And it goes back to if the earth, like why wouldn't you want to take care of the life that's sustaining all life, you know, and she really doesn't need us, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. But so I just oh I feel that, you know, what you're saying, that uh, we have to you know she is she and she's constantly giving and she's not i don't feel like you see like you were saying she's checking things off as she goes mm-hmm. along mm-hmm. she's not like yeah. like we are and you know without the environment without the earth without the water the air we cannot live yeah and we need to yeah. we need to have respect yeah I, I think that that's a whole that's the whole um awareness that we should we should we we do, we have to apply 
the mystery consciously to everything. And I think that that's part of what I do. And, and, you know, I know the mistakes that I've made and, you know, I can't make up for those mistakes, but I can do what I can right now to make sure and ensure that if I do what I do right now, then it will be, there'll be something left for others so that they can do. And, uh, when you think about, um, the whole thought of, of, um, how do you say it? Uh, the concept that we always we always refer to um, in the English is uh, uh, well, I don't know. I'll have to come back to that. I think what I'm trying to say is is individually. See, we think we have power. We're told we have power individually. It's like okay, so. If if a, all these candles are lit in this room, and then you go in that room and light your own candle, is your power alone than, than with all of us? It's all connected in this room. We all have our candles lit. But I choose to be individual and have power, so I'm going to go in that room by myself. Yet there's no really power at all because that person is isolating themselves and all of a sudden I have magical powers and all these things and I can change things because that's of the head because physically spiritually you cannot do that unless you think in a dominator way in the in the evil and all that stuff that they're saying and I hear this from native people also I'm not leaving us out of the out of their system systematic plan is that when we understand that through our mistakes we can only bring awareness, but we're not, we don't forgive ourselves. In this society, we're about forgiving everybody else. That's too easy. And it's even difficult because we don't know how to do that because there's only, well, if we're, we're doing this, then we're going to look good because we forgive. But we don't know how to do it to ourselves, which keeps you in that dogmatic and keeps you in that, in that dogmatic, keeps you in that candle, that room by yourself. Because you're not joining life as it is with, you know, like, okay. So so our purpose here, we, th- we think about purpose. There's no answer to that. People think that, oh, this is a purpose and whatever. It's understanding that energy, all that place. Like I get up in the morning, I, to- I said, like I said before, I, t- I thank my body for, for being there for me. I wake up and say, hey, body, thanks for, for waiting for me all night. And then I'm like in that awareness, and then it's one awareness after another. And that's all it is. Even your thoughts and awareness and awareness. And if you forget, that's fine. And, um, you know, but we, we understand, I understand that the, the, the patriarchy is abusing Mother Earth. And it's abusing us. And it's abusing Native people. And it's abusing them who are doing it. But we have so rationalized it into a place that it's okay because we are human. We can make things. We can write things. We can do things other life forms cannot do. Well, guess what? Those life forms can also do things that we can't do. Right. And thinking about what you just said, you know, we're, we're here where Mount St. Helens is, right, folks? The Mountain Blue, right? 86. There's new life forms that are coming up. Mm-hmm. Brian Fresina can't do that. Yep. I can't. Only the earth and, you know, out of the ashes, she yeah. rebirths. She's yeah. the only one. Yeah. You know, and I think about that and I think about the bird up there and the, that is flying or the tree. I can't do any of yeah. that. We don't have power. No. No. But collectively, I think when we're all the candles together, we create an energy that can change things. That's That's just it, you know, and we think about how society thinks about energy. They think in technology. But nanotechnology has gotten so delicate that they have to put maybe a volt or half a volt so that they don't burn the technology. Well, you know, when when at those times, sensitive computers are so sensitive now, they can shield it all they want. But sometimes mother, father, son can send down waves and just cook everything. Right. 
So we can't get away from the natural processes, but we, why are people trying to? Because they're uncomfortable with, with ever recognizing that their energy, life force, comes from Mother Earth, you know, in combination with the sun. And, and, and even explaining that way almost makes it scientific and, and we're splitting everything up and, and into the duality you know, and that's what that's what I was here at Evergreen for is truly understanding the non duality and the duality and trying to make a difference between the two rather than saying, No, they're same you know, and, and that, that we have come into a spot where we're all one but we don't even know how to be that because we don't know how to relate to the one. So it's it's all these mottos and all this jargon coming out there, oh we're all one and we don't even know how to do that yet because that we haven't gone to the source. Oh, well, we forgot about Mitakuyasa. Yeah. You know, as a, as a whole. That's relationship. Right. That's all in relationship. There's nothing about saying we are all one. See? There's a difference in that. The interconnectedness of all life that comes from the yeah. source. And who are we to say it's all one? See? Who are we to say that when we don't even know that? Maybe there's another number <laughs> that we don't even know. So uh, yeah, this this stuff. Uh, I hope I hope folks see it goes a hope thing. Uh, I have to catch myself. I I would think that people would understand what we're trying to say and is trying to regain intimacy intimacy with Mother Earth by this process of exchanging these these thought patterns, these heart think. Right. Absolutely. And we got about five more minutes. I think G Dub is in the house, but oh, I, good. I wanted to just to say, you know, one of the things that Uncle Billy said once to me, he said that uh, the water's sick. And he, well, you want to know why they don't know it? I said, well, well, yeah, Uncle. He says they're not fishermen. They don't go to the water. They don't touch her. They just look and see her from that four hundred thousand dollar home, and they go, oh, that's it's beautiful it's all okay but they don't go down and touch her they don't that connectedness that you're talking about yeah. if they went into the water and they would feel the water and be connected to the water they would know it's sick and that it needs our needs our attention yeah very true well hey brian thank you for having me here today and uh world peace and prayer day man yeah and uh i appreciate you uh, uh I'm, this is good i, I like yeah. you be it in the house and uh yeah. Sneaking in on us. I, I didn't know he was doing a road trip. Hey, man, so you know, all the way from New York to, to Little Olympia to just be on make no bones about it, throw away the bag, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 good. And uh, G-Dub is behind us. Cool. And, and, uh, so, I, I, again, thanks to Yokosin oh, for, yeah. for being with us. And I'm going to play a, a song and uh, get Gary all queued up. And all right. uh, so... so Thanks, thanks for uh, all the work you do. Uh, you do this so that other people may live. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, we're going to play one one last song on our way out. This is uh, Chaos Radio, 89.3 FM and, uh, in Olympia, Washington. Thank Teokas and Ghost Horse for being in the studio with us and sharing with us this evening. And uh, Yeah, it, it's really important for us to come into that heart space that we've been talking about um and uh the, the longest journey is from your head until your heart and uh so yeah um, try to cue this this song up here play another song from the coastal area here we'll go with the eagle blessing so y'all see that eagle thank you for listening <laughs>